Well, thank you so much for taking the time to learn a little bit more about St. Edwards University's social work program today. My name is Mallory Mazzarella. I'm an Associate Director of Admission here, and um, we're also joined by our faculty members and an alum of the university to uh, give you some information about this program. Uh, before we get started, if you can go to the next slide, please. Um, I want to go over just how the Zoom webinar will function. So the information session should last about 30 minutes in total. We are going to be saving time for questions at the end. So if you have anything that you want to know more about or um, questions about the program, questions for our faculty, you can submit those at any time using the Q&A feature. And so you'll see a little button at the bottom or top of your screen, depending on your layout, uh, with two little chat bubbles that says Q&A. And so you can submit questions there, either anonymously or with your name attached. And um, we will either answer them kind of live during our Q&A uh, session at the end, or you may get a typed response back to you in the Q&A, um, especially if it's maybe a more admission focused question, I'll be handling some of those behind the scenes. Um, we will not be using the chat feature that's turned off. Um, and we also don't have uh, mics or cameras turned on for any attendees. So um, the only way that you'll be able to interact with us is via the Q&A. So at this point, I will turn things over to our faculty to introduce themselves. Good afternoon. My name is Laurie Cook Heffron, and I'm the director of the social work program at St. Edwards University. I'm also a social worker and a social science researcher. So my work is related to intimate partner violence, sexual assault, and human trafficking, and the ways that those issues connect up with migration or immigration. And I am very happy to be joined by both Dr. Natalie Beck and Rocio Vega, who you'll hear from again in a minute. Uh, Dr. Beck is um, also a social worker and a professor here at St. Edwards University, and her work focuses on uh, family-based um, uh, therapy and treatment with adolescents, substance use, and the juvenile justice system. And Dr. Beck is also the director of field education at St. Edwards University, which means that she coordinates the senior level intensive field internships, which she'll talk more about in a minute. And then we're also joined by Rocio Vega, uh, an alumni from St. Edwards University. Uh, Rocio graduated in May 2020 with her undergraduate degree and with a major in, in, uh, in social work. And she uh, moved right into a position as a bilingual home parent educator at Any Baby Can, a local and very highly respected uh, social services organization here in Austin, Texas. So we'll get to hear a little bit about um, Rocio's experience in the program and just as a student at St. Edwards and how it prepared her to move into um, her current role at Any Baby Can. So what, what we hope to do today is um, give you, um, again, information about the social work program, what it looks like in the classroom, what it looks like in the community, and what it looks like in this field internship that I mentioned. But we also hope to give you some information um, about what this looks like after graduation, what our program prepares people to work in, um, the environments that prepares uh, folks to work in afterwards and the kinds of things that our graduates often go on to do. So first, I think um, it's helpful for a lot of people sometimes to learn a little bit more about what social work is. Not all of us know what social work is. Um, I came to the field of social work later in my in my career um, and didn't have a good handle on what that meant. And so um, really social work is about advancing human rights and advancing social, economic and environmental justice. And um, you may know that the majority of mental health services in the United States are actually provided by social workers uh, acting as counselors and therapists and clinicians. But social work is not only that. Social workers operate and work in um, work to advance justice across multiple settings. Social workers are working in hospitals, in schools, in community-based organizations that are working to end child abuse or working to end domestic violence or working to end homelessness. Social workers are also working in policy advocacy organizations. They're working in the legislature. They're working in Congress. Representative Sylvia Garcia, in fact, right now is a Congresswoman from Texas who is also a social worker. And then social workers also work in movements like bigger social movements that work to protect human rights or women's rights, immigrant rights, uh, the rights of people with disabilities and the rights of the community of LGBTQ plus folks. And so what our program hopes to do is ensure that students are getting, getting, getting the knowledge and the practical experience to be able to address a variety of those social issues, but also to be able to design and implement and then to evaluate 
social change efforts um, from the individual level all the way up to systems change levels. So really, so in social work, we study how the human experience is impacted by multiple systems at the individual level, within families, within communities and institutions, all the way up to how social norms and discrimination and oppression impact our experience. So in that sense, social work really is an applied field. Um, and our program highlights that by promoting experiential learning so that by the time you graduate, we hope that you have not just the knowledge, but the theoretical grounding and the skills and the experience that you can move right on into work or to graduate school or whatnot. And so in terms of the classroom, um, uh, coursework in this degree covers a variety of introductory courses about social work, um, also including um, psychology and sociology as a grounding. Uh, we also have a number of courses that hope to build our theoretical or conceptual understanding, but also research skills. And then we also have a number of applied courses, applied practice courses. And these really are courses, again, that aim to apply that knowledge and that theory directly to real life situations. And then our program also offers uh, a number of electives uh, to, to, to allow students to hone in on something of particular interest to them, but also areas that are of particular interest to us as faculty in areas that we really are working in intensely, either with research or our own practice in the field. And so uh, something to note about what social work classes look like, I think, is that, um, and this is not an example of a social work class, this is our Monday library on campus um, at St. Edwards University and one of our social work students studying hard. Um, but in social work classes, we, they tend to be um, heavily focused on activities and discussion, experiential learning, um, uh, as opposed to more lecture-based um, courses. So there may be some uh, lecture or uh, light lecture, not light lecture, but short lecture, um, but really our courses um, uh, focus more on hands-on application of the materials that we're reading about to, as I mentioned before, real cases and real, um, real life work with individuals in the community. And so in addition to the classroom setting, our program also uh, heavily, um, our, at least our students, I think are really heavily involved in campus and community activities. And so on our campus, um, our students are often involved in and really often are in leadership positions in student organizations. And those might be um, an organization called It's On Us that works to end sexual violence. There's another student organization called Monarchs on the Hilltop that works to ensure the rights of immigrants, particularly undocumented immigrants. Another one that comes to mind is Ignite, an organization that helps to promote women in civic engagement and political engagement running for office. So on campus, a lot is happening, but also off campus. And so in these photos, you see some pictures of us as a social work community, faculty and students together um, out in the community, um, particularly at an event that, that is held every spring called Social Work Advocacy Day at the legislature where we prepare in advance and then go to the Texas Capitol, meet with legislators in their offices to talk about um, issues that are of importance to us as constituents, but also to the clients we work with in the community. And I wanna pass it on uh, now to Dr. Natalie Bex to help us understand a little bit more about how all this works um, in our field internships program. Thank you, Dr. Kukafran. Um, so our internship is, is um, an integral part of our program. It's, it's the culminating experience. It's like the icing on the cake um, that students look forward to. And it's, it's really where um, students get to put all of the learning, all of the classes that they've done into practice. Um, and they get to get to work in the community with a practicing social worker. I mean, it's usually their last semester or last two semesters. Um, but they're working, um, I would say on site, but this semester, some of it's been virtual, um, but um, with, a, with a social worker um, directly with a community agency. Um, and I work with you as field director to match your interests. Um, so you're not alone trying to find an internship. It's really um, structured and supported. And um, I, I support you the whole way through. And in fact, I also facilitate a class that corresponds with the internship. So that's where there's some peer support as well um, with all of the other students in their internships at the same time. 
So some examples of internship sites, um, we're really lucky, lucky. We have amazing community partners and we're always building new partnerships um, based on student interest and um, having social workers in the community reach out to us. So you can see here a number of agencies um, that we work with and it's really exciting um, because these are, are agencies that deal with issues that our students are really interested in. So they get to um, apply the learning, like I said, that they've done in the classroom really into um, practicing their social work skills in the community while having the support of not only the, the program, but the um, field instructor, which is the identified social worker in the, in the placement. Um, so the good news too is because of this placement, it's one of the components that allows us to be an accredited program. And so since we are accredited, that allows students, if they're interested in pursuing a master's degree in social work, to go into what's called an advanced standing program, which essentially cuts a year off of the master's degree. So um, the, our students can go um, complete a master's degree in a, in a shortened amount of time to um, because of the learning that they've done in our program. So I think that's something that's definitely unique about the bachelor's in social work program is that bridge to the master's program if that's something students are interested in. Um, also, what if students are interested in um, going straight into the, the workforce, um, the time spent at the agency of the internship can be a really good bridge into the workforce. Um, sometimes the dream happens and um, like Rocio will tell you, she got hired on at her internship. So that's definitely ideal when that happens. But also a lot of great networking takes place in the community when students are at their internships and they can turn into jobs in a number of ways. Um, so this is an idea of some of the things um, that our students do after finishing our program. So like I mentioned, um, the BSW is a great bridge to a master's in social work program. We have a lot of students that do that. But we also have students that take other avenues in pursuing further education. Um, Social work intersects very well with a lot of different fields. So we have students that are pursuing public health, public administration, law. Actually, I have a student I'm working with uh, who just graduated last year that's getting a journalism degree and she's overlapping social work and journalism beautifully. Um, so that's a, that's a route some people take and some of them go right away and some take some time off and then go to graduate school later. Um, like I said, uh, the internship is a great bridge into an employment uh, opportunity. So these are some of the place that our, places that our students are employed currently, uh, our former students. Some of our students also go on to postgraduate service, things like Fulbright, uh, Peace Corps, Jesuit Volunteer Corps, Augustinian Volunteers, um, ways that they can continue to serve their community after they graduate. And then also um, social work has options for licensure in Texas. And so we have um, former students that are licensed on all the levels and practicing on all the levels of social work in Texas. And now um, we're gonna hear from one of our former students, Rocio Vega, um, and she's gonna share with us her experiences in the program as only a student can. So go ahead, Rocio. Thank you, Dr. Beck and Dr. Heffron and for everybody who um, is here today with us. Um, so I'm going to just give like a brief time, uh, timeline of my four years at school, starting with how I got into the social work program. Um, I was originally going to major in psychology, but I decided shortly that that was not the field for me um, and went into the social work program. I'm very happy that I did that because now I am here in the amazing career that I have. Uh, very fortunate to be here. And so um, what I really like about the experience in the social work program is the cohort, the amazing community that we have. Um, Dr. Heffron mentioned this. We really grow together in the four years and I still have some of those friendships um, currently today. And in the classroom, like in field, we share resources, we share um, advice, and we're just there to listen to one another if um, for things that we go through because it is like having a job and being out in the field. Um, and then I also had the opportunity in the middle picture, I was in Sydney. Um, I had the opportunity to study abroad and go to Australia. And a lot of it um, was due to the support that uh, Dr. Heffron gave me because as a third year student, it is a little bit different whenever it comes to choosing classes that you're going to take abroad because you start getting into those important core courses that you can only take at your school. Um, but we were able to do it and I am very grateful for that. It was a great time. Um, I do recommend 
that if you have the opportunity to go ahead and take that step, it really gets you out of your comfort zone and allows you to um, meet other people and learn about other cultures, which is amazing. And to social work, it ties into everything. Um, so I really had a good time there. And in terms of experience in field, um, I did the block placement, which is where you complete your internship in one semester. And if I'm not mistaken, it was 340 hours roughly. And it was nonetheless intense, but very rewarding. Like Dr. Beck said, I was able to get a job. And just like it sounds, it was the icing on top of the cake. It was just everything that I imagined. And the work that I am doing is where I wanted to be. Um, but I'll speak a little bit more about that in just a second. Um, the process of going into field was very much so like job hunting. I had two, inter uh, two interviews and I was able to decide where I wanted to go and very uh, the two placements were very aligned with what I wanted to do. But Any Baby Can spoke mo more to me. Their mission was amazing. And so that's how I was able to make that final decision and go with them. Um, and then I was also able to build that community there. Uh, I really liked the people who I worked with. They taught me a lot. I had any question that I had was answered. And I also could take that back to the classroom when I had, when I needed advice with anything in fields, my classmates would help me and Dr. Beck would answer any question that I had. And so that was the perfect combination, being at field and being able to be with the professionals and the clients that we serve, but also bringing it back to the classroom and being able to discuss everything and really get the student input and your classmates input with whatever they're going on, um, experiencing in their internship as well. So it's very important. And to me, it was just the resource building and the network building that I loved about uh, the entire experience. And like I mentioned, I still am part of um, a Facebook page that we have where we stay connected and we provide resources to one another. We um, share information that's helpful out in the community, anything that changes. And so it's super special and a really good time. Um, and then a little bit more of my final year where the pandemic happened and we all got shaken up a little bit. So um, it was after spring break and I remember that we had an extension onto that in the process although it was very overwhelming, um, the staff, everybody was very concerned about the mental health and well-being of us. So, and that I want to point out that that's really what social work is about. Um, oftentimes, setting that mental well-being of your clients and the communities that you work in before you even move on to anything else. Um, and so that really tightened the whole experience. And as this major, it made us really bring out our skills and our strengths and our resilience in this tough time. Um, and then when graduation came, uh, I was still in my internship during the remote time. And so it was very smooth. I had the support from everybody at St. Ed's and I had the support from everybody at Any Baby Can. And so I was able to move remotely. And like Dr. Beck mentioned, I did get a job. So while even before I graduated, my supervisor offered me a position and advised me to apply. And I wanna thank Dr. Beck for actually preparing me for the interview because everything that we went over, I got asked. So I was more than prepared for my interview and I was able to show off what I had learned in this amazing program and amazing school. Um, and so I felt really fortunate and it has just been a good time ever since then. Right now I'm a parent educator and I help uh, families just bring out their full potential with their kids. Every other week we meet for an hour and we just discuss how they're doing. And I see to, I am able to see the children grow and just really develop in the way that they're supposed to along with their parents. So it's very nice um, to have that. Thank you so much, Rocio. <laughs> um, I think that uh, um, I think probably Rocio and Natalie and I all have uh, quite a bit 
more to say and, and would love to respond to questions that come from, from anyone. Um, I, I wanna make sure I give you um, the email addresses for our social work faculty in case you wanna reach out directly to any of them. Um, but also I wanna open it up for, for any questions folks have. I think a couple questions came in through uh, while Rocio was talking and I tried to uh, respond to those, but we can talk more about those or any other questions that folks have. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so I saw those questions come through in the chat as well. And I think that they're um, important questions to kind of discuss for everybody to hear. Um, so the first one that was asked was, uh, and Rocio, you may be able to speak to this a little bit more, um, and the faculty may be able to speak to this a little bit more. Um, but can you give us a little bit more detail on just how a study abroad program fits into the social work curriculum? Um, kind of what, what needs to be done to make that possible? Um, and what support is available for students who are interested in that? Yeah, I can speak a little bit to that. Um, and so a lot of work went into it. Uh, Lori or Dr. Hepburn, sorry, would meet with me very often and go over the things that we needed to get done in terms of um, selecting the classes that we wanted to, that I needed to take to be able to graduate and not fall behind because the point of going abroad was to also explore a new place, but to make sure that I would stay on track. And so uh, what I would recommend is that studying abroad it's easier whenever you still have your core classes, for example, like math or your electives like Spanish, because it's a lot easier. And so I still had some of those that I was able to complete abroad, but I did take a sociology course. And a lot of it has to do with the school that you choose and where you decide to go, because there's a list on the study abroad um, program and they share it with you where you go through every school and they have the classes that you can take. And so you find whether they match to the class that you need to take at St. Ed's, like if you will get credit for that, um, and then decide where you wanna go and what school would best fit your needs at the time that you are wanting to make that plan. Yeah, I agree. You uh, that was a that was a lovely semester or two where I got to meet with Rosie frequently to ensure that she wasn't gonna, um, uh, her degree plan wouldn't be, um, uh, messed up by going abroad. Um, I studied abroad as an undergrad student um, for an entire calendar year and just really am, support it um, as much as possible with students because it made a big impact on me and my own learning during undergrad and throughout my life. <laughs> um, so I guess the other piece I would say, and Rocio, you already kind of said this though, is that um, as early as you can begin thinking and talking with advisors about it, the better, because our social work degree plan is quite sequenced and structured. Uh, one class is needed for the next, right? And this is because at the end, you will be working with real people in real communities. So um, that's the reason for the sequencing and the structure. But we can work around that if we are if we start early enough. And um, I think there's really a commitment among social work faculty and saying, Ed's in general to make that happen when we can. Also, a really exciting thing once COVID is over is that Dr. Kokefron and I partnered with the Spanish department and got a study abroad proposal approved to go to Oaxaca, Mexico. And so for at least two summers um, in the future, we will be teaching social work classes abroad through St. Edward. So they will definitely count and there won't be any of that shuffling. So once COVID's over, we are ready to go to Mexico with the Spanish department. So that's definitely something to look forward to. Awesome. Um, and the final piece that I'll add to that just from the admissions side is that um, when you enter St. Edwards as a freshman student, you get a lot of support for kind of starting to plan your time on campus. Um, all first year students are assigned a success coach who is there to kind of talk through some of these things with you. And as you can see, certainly you'll get a lot of uh, support from within your department as well as you start to get to know those faculty. Um, but if you're interested in study abroad and you're also interested in kind of a more sequential regimented degree plan, talk to your success coach about that from the beginning. Um, they can put you in touch with people in the department or people in study abroad um, or all of those people and help you kind of start that conversation early, um, even if you're still kind of not 100% sure on your major. Um, so the next question that was asked, uh, does one have to be accepted into the formal social work program before taking upper division courses? So uh, because of our accreditation that Dr. Beck mentioned earlier, um, that leads you to be able to be licensed as a BSW, LBSW immediately after graduation or proceed in through a um, 
accelerated graduate degree. Uh, because of that, we do have one kind of additional step in the social work major. So any student can declare themselves a social work major at any time. Uh, but once that happens and once you're in the introductory courses, we will ask you to uh, come for an additional meeting, give us some additional information, just that opens up a space for us to talk with folks more about the degree plan, about the career and the profession itself, just to make sure it's the best match that it can be and to make sure that we're available to answer any questions that students might have. So there is a process, um, but it's not a process that is aimed to keep people out. Rather, it's a process to increase information and communication about the program and the degree plan itself. Awesome. Sorry, I lost my mouse for a second there. <laughs> um, thank you so much for providing that information. Um, and then again, from the admission side, um, we don't require students to apply at the time of admission to specific majors or programs. Um, so if you are considering social work or you're interested in social work, you just apply to St. Edwards as usual. Um, and then again, you'll kind of go through that process of confirming that that's your choice once you're on campus. Um, and the same goes, although it's a little bit less uh, involved, there's less of an official process um, for other majors on campus as well. But, you know, it's a conversation with your department. It's a conversation with your success coach once you get here. Uh, so we give you a lot of options and a lot of freedom and uh, none of it is about keeping people out of programs that they want to be in. Um, Can so I say one more thing about that, Mallory? Um, we often also, I want to just say that we also work really closely with students who aren't so short majors. So we very frequently have students in our classes, or even if they're not in our classes, that, that come to us for guidance and advising if they're interested in a graduate degree in social work. So um, that that is much of our work as well, is to talk to students in psychology or sociology or any other major who, who maybe didn't discover social work until later, and so they decided to not major in it, but they do want to get that graduate degree. And so we're, we're available to write letters of recommendation to help people think through job um, interviews to help people think through essays they're preparing for their graduate school application so it goes be we we like to be op have open doors to students in our program but also across the university great thank you um and we had another question submitted um and Rocio, you may be able to speak to this as a student. Um, would you recommend having a car your junior or senior year for your internships um, or is that something that's necessary? Yeah, um, so it's definitely not necessary because I did have a friend in my same year who did not have a car and she her internship was maybe less than a mile away from St. Ed's. So she would sometimes walk there or get the bus there or honestly, like sometimes I would drive her there and anybody and that's the when I speak to community, that's really what I mean. Like we support one another in every way. It's not just in the classroom. Um, and so it went beyond that. Uh, but in terms of my internship, it was about like 10 miles away. So I did need a car. Um, so it just really depends to your circumstance and where you want to be, but it's not necessary. Yeah, I, I second what Rocio said. Um, I, the good news is our program is small, so I get to work with everyone individually and find out their situations and maybe if they have access to a car or not, you know, what part of town they're looking in. And so before people start their internships, we sit down and we talk about interest and availability and um, location and those things. And those are all factored into uh, the decision about the internship. So we can work with people wherever they're at. And I, I've worked, um, thoughtfully to develop internships that are near campus for that reason. And so we do have a number of internships that are very close to campus or, and on campus um, that are available for students if transportation is an issue. All right, perfect. Um, and then another question that I kind of just wanted to pose to all of you, um, you know, the St. Edwards community, you guys have touched on it a little bit, uh, is generally a really supportive place. Um, it's also a community that offers a lot of opportunities to get involved in things like community service, um, supporting students and getting involved in, you know, issues that are important to them. Um, can you talk a little bit about how kind of the social work major aligns with um, the mission of the university and how kind of, you know, the, the campus culture may go with the program or um, help make our program unique? Yeah. 
Um, I can start and Rocio and Dr. Beck, y'all follow as as you as you wish. Um, you know, I think we are biased because we're in the social work program, but I think we we tend to think of the program and the major as really embodying the mission of St. Ed's. Um, social work is very explicitly about dismantling uh, systems of oppression and working towards social justice. Um, in addition to, you know, service, um, as you mentioned, in and that being the mechanism by which we work against injustice. And so, um, you know, very early on, um, not only is St. Ed's have extensive opportunities for service learning, but the social work program also builds that in. So the very first introductory course to social work has a, a service learning component as a requirement. And so students often will do that on campus through campus organizations. Like there's um, there's a there's an organization called Serve, um, and um, where students can work together with other St. Ed students working in a variety of community-based organizations. One example I think of where there's a really strong partnership between St. Ed's is with Casa Marianella, which is a, um, a shelter and a community-based organization that works to uh, provide support and resources to immigrant families and immigrant individuals experiencing homelessness. So that's just one example. There are many, many examples. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I think students really early on get involved with service learning, and there are a lot of resources and supports around that. So, so in social work, it's important. It's part of our requirement. <laughs> um, but I think that that spirit exists across campus with all students. Yes, definitely. I can jump in a little bit. I was actually part of SERVE and I went to El Buen Samaritano, which also they have a strong connection. And during this time as well, during Thanksgiving, we were able to give meals out to families. Um, and it was really a great experience. It wasn't just social work students, it was students all over campus. So we were able to be that community in another community, helping just one another in the bigger picture. And it was really neat. Um, and then on top of that, we always have uh, guest speakers coming into our classes, inviting us to join organizations. I was part of the SWSA, which is a social work student association and the psychology, psychological, sorry, association, which was really nice um, and even like it's everywhere. Yeah, the community is everywhere. We always have um, just people outside, like in the lawns, um, inviting you, and you just get the aspect of the community everywhere. So when we say that we are a community, we really mean it, and you really feel it when you're here. So even outside, ones that have graduated, I still feel part of the St. Ed's community. And I'll just add one other piece. I, I'm new-ish to the St. Ed's community. This is my second year. Um, but it's, I, I agree so much with what y'all are saying. It's just really part of how St. Ed's does things. It's, it's very, it's a very good match with social work. So I found that in my classes, I've been very easily able to bring in um, doing work in the community. So for example, um, for my, my class, race, class, and gender, which is social justice focused, uh, the students actually go into the community and do some kind of project in the community. So it's not just like hypothetically doing things in the classroom, it's like actually doing in the work in the community and bringing that back to the classroom and reflecting on it and learning from that. And I think St. Ed's is so supportive of that and it's it's so um, interwoven into social work, it's such a good fit. Awesome, thank you all so much. Um, we have another question submitted from a viewer. Uh, so this is a, a really good question, a little bit detailed question. Um, how does St. Edward's social work program or St. Edward's as a whole prepare students for the non-client aspects of social work jobs? Um, for instance, how does the social work program or St. Edwards prepare students for self-advocacy, such as negotiating one's salary or one's caseload within a work environment? That is a great question, an important one for this work and for the profession. So thank you, Jonathan, for raising it. Um, I think we do that in a couple of different ways. Um, in terms of programming, one of the things that we do generally once a year, sometimes twice a year, is we'll have a panel of uh, practicing social workers from out in the community come uh, talk with our current students about licensing, about entering the job market, and or about graduate school and making decisions about whether or not graduate school is, a, is the right decision. And so oftentimes, in fact, the last time we held this panel, there were, there were long conversations about negotiating salary um, and other benefits. Uh, so we do that in terms of our programming throughout the year, but also uh, we embed that into some of our courses. So the field seminar that Dr. Beck teaches um, simply because that course teaches students right before they graduate tends to be a space for those conversations. Um, and also in advising. So in our academic advising, when we're talking with students about what's next for them. 
The other component that your question makes me think of is that I consider also self-advocacy is how social workers take care of themselves um, so that they can be well <laughs> and continue doing work that they're passionate about. And so uh, sometimes people call that self-care. Sometimes people call that building resilience. Sometimes people call that just protecting your own well-being. And those topics we try to embed in many classes. And so when, when students are in their field internships, uh, they have to be thinking thinking um, and, and reflecting on what that means for them and advocating with their um, supervisors in the field. Um, we ask students um, to also in a, in a course that we have that's a macro level practice course where we're looking at organizational change, we ask students to assess organizations. How are organizations doing in terms of protecting their workers? And that includes pay and compensation. That includes benefits, days off. That includes the work environment, the training needed to prepare folks for the work they're doing, their caseload, as you mentioned, Jonathan. Um, so I think we, we pepper that out in a number of ways in the classroom, in advising, and in programming throughout the semester. I want to add a little bit to that because I actually attended that panel and I was able to, whenever I was getting hired to mention my salary and um, I built the confidence through listening to all the panelists and to talking to Dr. Beck about that. Um, and so it was a conversation that I was confident and comfortable in having whenever we were making the, uh, whenever I was getting hired. And also in terms of like, being at the job already, I do one-on-one -on -one supervision with my supervisor and it's very much so like your advising meetings. Um, you express your needs, you express what you want, um, where you wanna be, your goals and they work with you. So it's very much, you get that practice in that sense. Um, and really whenever you go into the field, we all really social workers understand each other. So you have that um, same interest and same background. Um, and so you're able to do a lot of that and the social work, um, the self care is very important too. I was able to ask those things during my interview and benefits and all those things, make sure that I had those things answered and that I was prepared to take this job. Um, and so it could best suit me and my professional goals that I had for myself, so. And just real quickly to echo what, what they both said, um, Dr. Kokevron talked about a lot of the formal ways that we, we do this, um, but then all, Rocio also mentioned the informal ways, right? So before she, when she had her interview, and thank you for the very nice shout out earlier, Rocio, um, you know, she scheduled an appointment with me and we just had a chat and we went over her questions about the interview and, you know, and the salary negotiation and all of that, and just kind of focused on, on her specific internship and her situation. And we do that all the time. Um, and I'm, I'm, you know, like I said, it's my second year here, but I'm doing it a lot for the students that graduated last year, still doing it. And I love it. I love to hear how they're doing and um, be a person in the community that they can connect with about, you know, all things social work and, and jobs and things. And so there's definitely that informal um, way that we do it too, which is, which is um, facilitated by how small and intimate our, our department is. The other thing I'll mention is that outside of the us in the social work program, uh, the university has a career and professional development office that helps with resume building, preparing for interviews, negotiating salaries, um, taking headshots for a LinkedIn page. And those services are available to students while they're at St. Ed's and after they graduate. Um, so uh, across the board, right? Social work and beyond. All right, thank you so much. Um, so I think that's all of the submitted questions that we have for right now. Does anyone have any um, closing thoughts or last few things you wanna share with our attendees? I guess one of the things I would say, and I, I already said it, but I'll say it again, is that um, we are always um, open and welcome to chat with you, um, to meet with you in person when it's not pandemic, but for now to meet with you via Zoom or telephone or to answer questions via email. So please don't ever hesitate to reach out directly to us. Um, and we would love to talk more about the social work program, the, the profession itself, or other majors or other experiences of being a St. Ed student. So. Yes, I also want to add if you guys ever have any questions, you can also reach out to me. I can share my email. Um, I can do it here or just provide it to to you, Mallory, um, so you can share it. Uh, if you ever have any questions about the student perspective or how I'm doing now in terms of like moving from school to work, um, because that was a whole another process, I can always share that information. So feel free to reach out to me as well.
And I just want to thank you for your time and interest today. Um, it's been a wonderful transition for me to, to come to St. Ed's and it was a very welcoming experience and uh, the social work department has just been wonderful. And so I appreciate y'all's um, interest in looking into it today. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. Um, if you do have any questions related to the admission process, if you're in the process of working on your application, please feel free to reach out to me um, or to anyone in the admission office. The easiest way to reach us is this admit at steadwords.edu email address that's on the screen, um, and we will connect you with your designated admission counselor or the appropriate faculty member or anyone else on campus that you need to speak with. Um, so yeah, thank you all so much for being here and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.